Hello and welcome to this edition of Chuck's Culture Channel. And this time around, I'm talking with actor, director, and playwright Joe Hanrahan, founder of the Midnight Company here in St. Louis. He's appearing in the local premiere of the one-actor show The Absolute Brightness of Leonard Pelkey by Celeste Lassine at the Kranzberg Arts Center, which is that cool building you're looking at right now. Performances are May 4th through 20th. We'll be talking about that and about the other Midnight Company shows coming up during the rest of 2023. Check the video description below for more information. And here with me is the star of that show and the man who founded the Midnight Company, Joe Hanrahan. Joe, how are you doing today? Okay, Chuck, and you? I am just fine, thanks very much. And of course, I have the uh, Kranzberg Center behind me. Yes, I see it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't big, see myself in there, but I'll show up there eventually. <laughs> yeah, also known as the Big Brothers Big Sisters building here in St. Louis, but this is where the Black Box Theater is, where you're doing the show. So tell us a little bit about this play. It is a one-person show. Uh, in the show, I, per- I portray eight different characters. The central character is a cop, a detective in a half-assed Jersey town uh, along the shore. And as the show starts... There's a young boy who's kind of recently come to town. He's 14 years old. His name is Leonard Pelkey, staying with a a family. And he is a very flamboyant, totally out there, maybe outrageous, very theatrical young man um, who he gains a a lot of love uh, from the people of the town, especially the women at the beauty salon that the woman he stays with. He he gives them fashion tips and makeup tips, and they love him for that. And uh, he's also part of the famous Buddy Howard School of Drama and Dance in town, and playing a very theatrical aerial in their upcoming uh, production of The Tempest. So he's a very kind of in-your-face, out-there, colorful kid, 14 years old. Yeah, but there are bullies in this town. It's a blue collar town. Mm -hmm. And as the show opens, he is missing. And it's the detective's job to find out what happened and where he is. And in doing so, I portray many of the people of the town, some of the middle aged people who are friends of his and a couple of the high school kids who are friends and bullies. And it's a uh, it's a great story. It's a police procedural. And at the same time, it's a real caution about you know, kind of pe- pigeonholing people and not not allowing people to have differences. So it has a bit of a message, which, you know, I Midnight Company does all, always, you know, try to deliver a message. But it, it's, it has a really sweet, sweet kind of uh, a message in this story. And uh, but but it's a fascinating story. And that's uh, that that's, you know, kind of my um, criteria for any show I try, try to do. And and, and it's going to be, a you know, a unique acting challenge. It's going to be directed by Allison Moser. Okay. You know, this seems like a really relevant topic. I mean, we have an entire political party now dedicated to the normalization, if not glorification of bullying, if I may say so. So this seems very much on point. Uh, Can you tell us a little bit, when was this written and and can you tell us something about the playwright? Yeah, it was written uh, several years ago. It was was first a novel. And uh, when I first reached out to find it, I found this, no- they sent me a novel and said, this isn't it. And he turned it into a one-person play, which he performed. Uh, but it's very different than the book, which is, I think he made some good dramatic choices. Uh, the playwright's uh, done some other books, some other plays. He also did a, uh, an Academy Award-winning short film oh. that he wrote and produced. It was called Trevor. It was about a troubled young gay teenager, suicide threat kind of story, very very great little film that won an Oscar. And from there, he he formed what is called the Trevor Project. And that's a project that we're going to try to highlight during this show as much as we can and draw attention to it. It's it's the country's uh, oldest um, um, 24-hour hotline for LGBTQ youth, basically suicide prevention, but it has other services, chats, and and other resources to uh, for, for kids to plug into to, uh, you know, become a, a little more comfortable with who, who they are, which, as you said, it kind of flies in the face of, of a lot of politics out there today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, we will have a link to the Trevor Project in the video description field below. Excellent. So we'll Excellent. Take, yeah. take a look at that. Joe, you've been doing these one-man shows for what seems like forever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> at this point. Uh, does this one present any particular challenges to you versus the others? I, I'm just curious. I think so. Yeah. You know, I've done 
far too many of them. I shouldn't do it anymore. <laughs> they, people don't want me to do it anymore. But I keep finding good scripts and it plugs in. And, you know, uh, it's a way to fit in a show in between other maybe bigger projects. But the one challenge I think on this show, and I, I've done a show before, uh, uh, particularly one called Cul de Sac by Daniel McIver, where I played about 10, 12 characters, including a 13 year old girl with autism. So, uh, you know, I, I'm used, to, I've done that, but now it's been a few years since then. I haven't, my acting lately over the past couple of years have been, you know, more supporting and not central roles, not big, big roles. I've been producing and writing and directing. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's a, it's a challenge to be out there for the, um, uh, the entirety of the show it's going to be a challenge to uh, do these different characters uh just because you know i'm, I'm probably not as uh, nimble as, as i once was <laughs> you know physically well, among us is joe <laughs> our psych our psychologically but but still it's so it's 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 fun getting there and uh, a great acting challenge that and that's the challenge it's the acting mm -hmm. acting challenge of course of doing different roles and and in do and in doing so being able to carry off um, uh, a clear story okay now, this is going to be in May, of course, mm -hmm. as we're yes. recording this. But uh, if you're watching this right now, and it's it's past May, uh, rest assured there are lots of other Midnight Company shows coming up. I was yeah. looking at your website, and I know you've got, uh, you've got a show coming up in July, July 13 through 29, The Years, by Cindy Lou Johnson, which you are directing. Uh-huh. And then after that, I noticed you have a show August 26th, pardon me, July 26th through August 9th. You Made Me Love You, Janelle Gilreath Owens, uh, in a tribute to Judy Garland. And then you've got a show at the St. Louis Fringe Festival in August as well. And following up with that, you're going to end the season October 5 through 21 with one of my favorite plays in the whole world, The Lion in Winter. By James yeah. Oldman, and I noticed that you. Congratulations! You've aged into the role of Henry the Second. I know. <laughs> you know, uh, Le Levon and I, uh, Levon Byers, is playing Eleanor of Aquitaine, and uh, yes, yes, I know. We're, we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're both, I think, the right you know age to kind of uh, circle the roles. But we both have done the roles previously. Levon did it when she was in her twenties uh, in graduate school. You know, mm -hmm. a graduate school cast their students as old, and I, I did it when I was. 21. I was in college in Wichita, Kansas, and my uh, college director teacher was directing the show at a boys high school. And because it has good boys roles, that he needed somebody with a beard. So he just plugged me in. So I had the pleasure of trying to do this role when I was uh, when I was 21. <laughs> and I if uh, just one other uh, mention is uh, if they're watching this thing and it's still May, we do have two shows uh, off. Ah. Uh, uh, added uh, for the uh, the sellout run we've had of uh, you, of uh, just one look, Linda Ronstadt show at the Blue Strawberry. I think we have shows Wednesday, May tenth, and Wednesday, May thirty first. Right, and of course, I did an interview with you about that earlier, so people can find that also on Chuck's Culture Channel. Yeah, Let's check it out, Joe. Thanks very much for taking some time to talk about this again uh, out there, folks. Please let everybody know about Chuck's Culture Channel. Let us uh, share us on the socials and anti-socials and just let people know we're out there. Let everybody know about the upcoming shows at the Midnight Company. And you can find all the information about that right down there in the video description field. Joe Henrican, thanks very much for taking the time to chat with me. Thank you, Chuck. I appreciate it. I'll see you soon. Okay. Bye-bye.